I'm going to do another example of using the guess method to solve a recurrence relation. This is the exact same recurrence relation as I had last time, except I just added a 1 over here. And I'm using this as an example of how adding even a simple term like 1 can uh, make the solution a lot more difficult and also make the process of solving it a lot more difficult. And actually, um, even though this case is solvable using the guess method, there are some recurrence relations where uh, you can you can solve them using the guess method, but then when you add a constant to one side, they're no longer guessable. Um, so let's take a look at this one. So if we look at the the first term here, this is just r times the zeroth term plus one. The next term, this is just going to be r times the previous term plus 1. So I'm just going to sub in the previous term here and then add 1. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to expand this because what I'm looking for here is I'm just looking for patterns because I want to guess the solution. So um, it's worth having it in both forms here just in case. So here's the expanded form over here. Now when I do the third one, now I have r times the previous term plus 1. Now I have the choice of either plugging this in or plugging this in for the previous term. And I think I'm going to go with the expanded term here. And I'm going to expand this one out. So here I would have r cubed f0. Here these are going to go up 1 degree. And I think that this is about as far as I want to go. The pattern does become kind of evident here. If we're going to guess the nth term, I would say that it would be r to the n times f0. And then we have this trailing polynomial here, which I can just write as a summation. These are just r to a power. So I could say r to the i, where my index, it looks like, is going to be starting at 0, and it's going to go up to n minus 1. So this is my solution. Um, now at this point, if you don't believe me, I'm going to prove that that was correct using induction. So I can just think of this as being a statement dependent on n, p of n. I already know that p of 1 is true because that would be f1, that would just be this thing here. f1 is equal to r times f0 plus 1. In this case, we have the, this, the sum is going from 0 to 0, so we only have the 0th term. This is just r to the 0, which is the 1 there that I have. So I know that p of 1 holds, and now all I have to do is suppose that p of k is true. And so now when I'm doing that, I'm just supposing that fk is equal to r to the k f0 plus sum of r to the i from 0 to k minus 1. And now the goal is to prove that um, supposing pk implies pk plus 1. So I'm just going to look at what is the k plus 1th term. And now is when I uh, use the original definition of the recurrence relation over here. So I see that fk plus 1, that would just be r times the kth term, which is this, plus 1. So the kth term is, f, is r to the k, f0, plus the sum from 0 to k minus 1 of, I, of r to the i, plus 1. So I can just factor this r through here. This is r to the k plus 1 f0. And then here, uh, there's a lot of different ways to think about what's going on here. But since this is just r to the power, multiplying it by r, that's just going to shift our indexes by 1. So I could just shift these indexes by 1. And then it just looks like this. And then I've just got my plus 1 over here. Um, so then the thing to notice is that this 1 can be considered the 0th term of this sum. So this is really r to the k plus 1 
F0 plus sum from 0 to K. I keep forgetting this R here. Of R to the I. And so looking back, supposing P, uh, that PK was true implied that PK plus 1 is true because this statement right here, this equation, is just P of K plus 1. And since I know my base case is true, that means that all of the successive cases must also be true. So we proved that P of n is true for all n, which was exactly what we wanted to prove. This is just the solution to the recurrence relation.